What's happening, Canes fam? It's your boy CB, and we are back for another Huddle Watch Along with a Canes commit. On today's episode, I have three-star offensive line committed to the 2024 class, Juan Manaya, a.k.a. The Door, a.k.a. The People Mover. When I say this dude literally moves people in the run game, but you don't want to hear me tell it. You want to watch it, and you want to hear from him himself. So without further ado, one of the most powerful offensive linemen in the class, three-star offensive lineman, Juan Manaya. How's it going, bro? Not much, man. How are you? Not too bad at all. Enjoying the weekend, enjoying some football. Uh, how's this week been for you? Uh, it's been a good week, you know. Uh, so we uh, played and stuff. It didn't go too well for us. But, um, you know, we're going to move on to next week and we're going to keep it moving. Yeah. You know how that goes. It's about how you respond to those moments, right? The true test of anybody, whether it's a team, a coach, a player, it's how you respond when your back is down. It's easy to rah-rah and have that energy when you win, but – you still got to believe in that same message and that same journey, even through a loss. Hell, you're going to learn more from this game than you would if you'd have won by 50. So you take all that that you learn, all that frustration, and then somebody next week got to feel it. That's how yeah, you sure. handle that. For sure. So on a more positive note, us as a fan base buzzing when you committed, obviously, another powerful, big, strong offensive lineman. Talk us to what 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 made that decision for you. What what was it about the Canes that drew you to to choose? Uh, the coaches definitely, the coaches and the love and the atmosphere. You know, it felt like bigger than football and bigger than recruiting. You know, it was all genuine love. Never never pressured me to commit. Me commit as early as I did. It was all my my doing. No like nothing. They loved me up. They wanted me there and stuff like that. And I just I just felt like it was a perfect fit for me. I love that because I was going to ask because you did commit relatively early. And so usually when you see that, it's like, oh, no, he he had his mind made up early because it, it wasn't just you. It's a few of you got Isaiah Thomas committed early. And Isaiah was quick to just be like, hey, stop calling me, y'all. Like, my, <laughs> I'm shut down. Y'all stop calling me. Yeah. So that, that's why I wanted to ask. I was like, you know, because that's a big decision in your journey, in your process. And for you to you obviously identify something early that you're like, all right, this is the crib. This is home. Like and then what I love too is you plies Judd from the second y'all decided we're Canes y'all hit the recruiting trail almost harder than the coaches. Talk about some of that camaraderie that you have already with some of the guys committed in the class. You know, obviously the commits are awesome, bro. So it's like we're all like committed to like the U, obviously, and like we're just ready to get like get it started, get down there, and get to work. And I feel like, you know, you got to recruit your teammates. You got to recruit, 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 and try to make the classes as good as possible because I do feel like we have a top 10 class. Yeah, y'all, first, as someone who think like, I, I, I tweet a lot about recruiting, and it's like, you and Joe be ahead of me. I'm like, hey, who's that? How do they, <laughs> how do they know that already? It's, but it, it's dope to see that pride. Like, from the second you guys verbally committed, it was like, inject orange and green in my veins, and now it's my job to make sure – that I helped Crystal Ball get this class. To that point, Coach Crystal Ball is one of the hardest working coaches in the nation, whether that's recruiting or just actually his his nine to five. What's that? What was your first impression of Crystal Ball when you met him and you got to talk to him? Man, Coach Crystal Ball's energy is like unmatched. You know, it's like you you feel his presence in the room automatically. Any room he steps in, he's just a great like humble, humble, and just like he's happy to do what he does. And I just like. Love the way the guys go, like the coaching staff goes about it in Miami. And it's like, I wouldn't want to play for anybody else. That dude, you could, his passion for the game is next level. Him and Mirabal, who's someone I have to ask you about, because you, know, you talk to Plaz, the second you say Mirabal, he lights up like you were about to just now. The second you say the name, you can see y'all's face go, oh, that's my dog. What's that relationship like with Coach Mirabal? What is he like? Bro, Coach Mirabal is awesome. You know, he's... <laughs> He, he just, like, he's just a great teacher, you know? Like, he's, like, he was a teacher before he got into coaching and all that stuff. So, that you makes know, like, so much sense now. When he when he teaches, like, you understand it, and, like, you retract it, and, like, he helps you out and stuff like that. And, like, even, even when I play my high school games, it's just, like, I'll send him film about, like, what happened in the high school games, and he'll try to coach me up. 
and all that. So it's just like. Well, I said the same thing. He said, like, I'll send him a clip and it's like high energy, all emojis and all exclamation points yeah. way back. Like, that, it's cool though, right? Because as an offensive For lineman, sure. obviously having a coach, you know, that's that passionate. That's like, oh, Juan got tape and he's more excited than you. For sure. That you have your huddle for this week. Yes, sir. And you know, obviously, as an offensive lineman, it's not just him as Coach Pada, it's Coach Bain. Yeah. Mario has put the the resources in on this staff. Like, it speaks to what, what that's like because you guys have resources that everybody don't have in that offensive line room. So this is what I've said to everybody so far. If you're an offensive lineman, you're dumb not to come to the University of Miami. We have four full-time O-line coaches, one being the head coach, which also played offensive line. So if that doesn't show the love and, like, the passion when it comes to, like, getting guys in the offensive line room, I don't know what does. You it, And you can tell the second he took over the program, Mario was like, all right. They were like, oh, go get speed. He was like, wait. We need I'm offensive fixing line. up front first. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's funny because I got I got friends that, you know, I got a couple of friends that are, you know, they either cover Oregon or they're Oregon friends or they, they're fans. And like a couple of weeks ago, Bo Nix didn't get touched. And one of them texted me and was like, hey, tell your coach thank you. Like, yep. because that attention to the offensive line, it doesn't always pay off year one. Sometimes not even year two. But then year three, year four, you find out not only do we have studs up front but then the depth behind it so that you can continue that excellence i think people overlook the offensive line sometimes and it's just like i get a big guy yeah but you need a little bit more you and you see it with this class like the guys like you guys like Derek, guys like nino mean aggressive powerful just different mario calls y'all aliens and when you watch the tape you go all right yeah they there's something different about these dudes and if you have not seen his tape this is his midseason so far, but I need y'all to know that bro moves people literally like we might start having to call him like a transformer or like a garbage truck because the way he moves people is insane. Like first play, straight move to man, pancake. And what I love about Juan is once he gets his hands on you, the, either the whistle is going to blow or you're going to hit the ground. Like there's no... Ain't no other outcome. Ain't no giving up mid play. It's I got your breastplate. We're going for a ride. That tenacity. Did you used to play some defensive tackle, bro? Because you got like that defensive tenacity. No, sir. I started playing football my freshman year. Really? So for someone who started playing a little bit later, when do you feel like the game started to slow down and make more sense to you? Once I once I really got in the weight room and I really started getting coached up more. It just the game got easier because you start like you start just like eventually just playing football and like reacting to stuff and stuff just starts happening and you like know what's going on, you know? And There's that like difference between playing on instinct. Yeah. So for you who's someone who gets to do it all, we gonna see him pass block. Big, big young man can get out that stance in a hurry though. But we see that. When you when you run block, we can't see your face, but we know you're smiling on a play like this. For you, what's more enjoyable when you get a, a situation like this, like this previous play? This is a perfect example. So you get a run play where you can completely clear a man five yards from where he was previously standing. Is that more enjoyable than on a on a pass blocking situation when you're one on one with a tackle or with a DN? You already you like don't even finish the question. I like moving people. <laughs> yeah, run blocking, run blocking is my thing. I love run blocking. You know, I feel like if you can't stop the run, like you, you're not gonna win the football game. Like it's just like is that imposing run, your will too? Yeah, it's just running the ball is just awesome. And the mean, bro, like the tenacity that you play with, like there's, it's not dirty, it's tenacity, it's aggression, it's driving a a, a defensive player. Prime example here. Not, I'm, I'm a flatten you. Like there is no if and or buts once Juan gets his hands on you. Like I'm a flatten you. But I like that. I like that aggression. I love that that quickness too. So something I was gonna ask you. We see you quite a bit pulling. And you're smooth when you do it and aggressive. Is that something you're going to look to do at the next level, play inside a little bit more? We know crystal ball and mirror ball 
they, they, they'd like you guys to learn all five. Is that something you've talked to him about? Wherever, wherever the Canes need me to play, that's where I'm going to play. You know, like I don't, I don't, I'm not too stuck up on the all oh, inside, outside. It doesn't matter. I just want to play. Whoever is going to help me play the quickest and help out, help out winning, that's where I'm going to play. So, absolutely wherever, love that. Wherever love they need. that, especially because it makes you, it makes you more valuable to the team, right? All right, we may not need a swing tackle this year, his freshman year, but we could use another guard. All right, go ahead and throw Juan inside. We know he's got the, the football IQ. We know he wants it. Half the battle is wanting it most of the time. For the sure. reason I keep rewinding this is I love the use of your hands. I, Especially smaller guy tries to get under you, get inside of his pass, throw him down, and then call it a day. Lay on top of you. You're not getting up. Just in case you got one of those high motors. We making sure you don't get up. I love that. How how is that front offensive line? Because I mean, we know we see a receiver cooking all day. They get to dance. They get to celebrate. They get the big yeah. interview. But when you've had a game like this, where you've imposed your will for four quarters, like describe that feeling for for someone that may be a skilled player watching or or a defensive player. For sure, I feel like in the trenches, if if you have a great game and like obviously like you end up like dominating like. Your opponent, anywhere they see you, they're going to end up respecting, you know. It's just, like, respect after, you know. I feel like offensive line and, like, the trenches in general, if you're dominating, it's just, like, a respect factor and, like, a pride factor. Like, Is you that guys going are, to war with somebody? Yeah, you guys are going going up against each other every single play, hitting each other, trying to move or not be moved. So I feel like the winner of that just, like, wins all the pride. And, like, you know, it's just. Oh, you're running back. Does, does your running back just love you, Juan? Because, like, let's keep it real. Running off tackle for y'all is just – I know when he gets that call, he's thinking 77 seal on the edge. Boy, I'm about to have another highlight. Like, I know he loves running behind you. Yeah. We run that and get him out, so. For you as an offensive lineman, do you have a favorite blocking scheme? Because a couple of times we see you – we're, we're going to see you get one and get to the second level – my my old offense in high school, we used to call that a liberty block. Get one, get to the second level, get a linebacker. Then we see you out in space too. Do you have a preference how you're used or for you when you get to be physical, you just having a good time? Down blocking is my favorite, to be honest, if I'm being honest with you. You're insanely good at it too. Like it that explosion, I think it's because you have that explosion and those strong hands. So once you get yeah, but then see, we see you kicking out like this, and I'm like, I don't know, Juan. You kind of <laughs> setting the edge. You kind of nasty at that too. I, I, but that that ability to love run blocking, like to me, that's my favorite kind of offensive lineman are the ones like you that when we talk about run blocking, you start smiling. You like, yeah, I like putting my hands on somebody. Like here, you blocked a man. Now I'm gonna pause this for everybody else. So. Juan and this gentleman start out here. He blocks him to the round <laughs> right here. That's what I call clearing a run, a, a running path for your running back. I, I that effort too, keeping your feet moving. It's very running back esque. Once you get your hands on somebody, you keep your feet moving. But this here, love this. Your ability to play in space too. They they let you get out on screens. I I I love that about you. That they because you're you're a bigger offensive lineman. When you see a bigger offensive lineman, you think, oh, he's a clod hopper. He's a dude that can't move. You pull. You get out there on screens. You when you're in the second level, I can tell you enjoy it. Like here, we see you getting out there in space. That athleticism, that versatility. That's why I think you're you're gonna fit perfectly for what Mirabal likes in an offensive lineman. Because you have you have that ability to do a little bit of everything, that run blocking, down blocking, like you love. But when they pull you, smoot for a bit, and you you're not a little a, a little gentleman. You know what I'm saying? Big guy. You should see this pass game. Feet. You should see this pass game. Um, I had two two really good screen highlights that they called. So and end mm -hmm. of the year uh, highlight tape. Those will be on there. And we and we coming back for that end of the year. So for so this is one of my favorite things to ask an offensive lineman because I play DB. I remember what it was like when y'all would get to the second level on us. How much fun is that for you when they call that screen oh. and you know 
Ooh, yeah. that safety been talking all game long. I get to see, like, because they all, like, as much as DBs want to act, like, tough and all this, you know, <laughs> you always see the fear in their face when you're when you're about <laughs> to get up in their grill and they're trying to run away from you and stuff or, like, trying to jump around you and all this. So it's always fun when you catch a black kid. To to me, that's that that's that's when I see y'all happy. Y'all be in the and y'all get to pull in. You can see like, oh, I got a linebacker in front of me because, like you said, your game all day is is locking horns with another two hundred eighty two three hundred pounder all game. It's about move or be moved. So I know when they call that screen, when they call that jailbreak, and you know. I get to go out there and, and hit 24 who just been yapping all day long. I get to actually put my hands on somebody like that. I love that. So back to this class, the camaraderie that it seems like you guys have built in this class. It's, it's really cool to see because a lot of you guys committed early. And then when you guys go down on the visits, like for the barbecue, you hear like, oh, we all kind of just were off to our own. We were tucked off, yeah. hanging out, getting to know each other. What what's that experience like when you do have a large? Because you guys yeah. don't always get yeah. to go to all the visits together, but then you Man, get the barbecue where all of y'all are there. Yeah, it, it's one thing. Like all the commits, it doesn't matter. Like even like the guys that are the uh, Elijah all the way in Vegas, the guys in Louisiana, you know me in Jersey and stuff like that, and like obviously the guys in Florida. Like most like events like recruiting events all like big games i feel like we all like we're all there for them like we were all there for them so it's like all recruiting events all everything so we've been around each other like a lot already so it's like we're familiar with each other so it, it's just going to be like second to get down that's what i was going to so, say too it feels like right once y'all get to green tree that bond is already started right like you know Derek, you know Daylin, you know jojo you know what you know what i'm saying it's like i i love that about y'all that that camaraderie is already building now for you who obviously you get to build a a, a relationship with lightfoot and Daylin russell and those guys in the class how how excited are you to get to green tree and, and get your hands on like an Artavius because those battles are going to be legendary. I know you and Derek be talking to, to Marquise and, 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 and Artavius telling them, hey, I can't wait to get my hands on you. It's going to be work, you know, just get each other better. <laughs> We're going to be working. Uh, it already started. We was, um, During the cookout, we had an intense seven on seven, like pool seven on seven. So hey. it got crazy, all the guys. <laughs> all right, all who won? Smoke. You got to tell us. You got to tell us. My team lost, <laughs> it, and I'm not gonna. That JoJo was bugging for them on the other team. <laughs> yeah, he really liked that though. Yeah, but chance it came down to the last point. You know, they got us on the last one, and we threw a pick. So y'all, you, you put y'all in the water playing fake seven on seven, and y'all still competitive. But I love brother. See, that's... brother Judd threw a pick for us, but he wanted to throw touchdowns for them. He threw that one pick on our side. So. <laughs> oh, was he all time QB? Yeah, Judd sold. Oh. Man, Judd, sold. <laughs> Judd sold. But then again, so you got to ask yourself. So he let JoJo's team win. Was that strategic? Because didn't oh, we no. land JoJo like like right before that? Was that? Yeah, I don't know, man. But. He's a quarterback, man. He got to keep everything together. He was probably thinking, "Look, I got to go ahead and uh, let me throw this pick to JoJo real quick. I know, I know what I know what I'm tasked to do. I need to bring JoJo to the crib <laughs> for sure." But I, I I love that about this class, man. Like it, it, you you're right. When you see a game like the A and M game, it's like so the list of probably visitors the energy coming in it is crazy, day. right? It's crazy. But then the list of already committed, it's like once one of y'all know y'all are going, it's like, oh, we all sliding now. What yeah. was that game like? Because you know, Bro. we we get to go to games, we get to see games, but in that recruiting section, what was that like? Bro, that game was straight vibes. So so <laughs> they were um so they were uh guys from my state there from like rival schools and stuff that were there and they're all, and they're all like, Yeah, you know, like A and M's gonna win, like so I'm like, all right, all right, y'all going to win, y'all going to win. And then, like, the game's going. And then we return, the kick return to the house. And after that, I just knew we won. So I just started <laughs> I just started talking the most, started talking the most. And so they just like, yeah, you got it, you know, and we won and stuff like that. 
And it's that like had to be fun like, to be a part of, though. For sure, wins like that like leave no doubt. Like you know, Miami's gonna bounce back from whatever fluke that was yesterday and stuff like that. It's like you know all like all this stuff that people are saying. It's just like it's it's nonsense. Like they're gonna bounce because back. You, That's a gr- you know you you yeah it's a great you know that you know that coach you know that coaching staff yeah. better than anyone with the Twitter fingers like. Sure. That's another before before I let you. That's something I wanted to bring up. That this staff works incredibly hard, but it's not just them. Like Isaiah Thomas Players. was like, I, I I I committed because not just the staff you see. He was like, dude, the people behind the scenes, like they remember your name after they meet you the first time. When it's time to set up for the photos, like they remember the poses that you like, the jersey that you wanted to wear. Like, speak to this recruiting staff and how and how influential they were in bringing you yeah. home to Miami as well. Kara, Tia, Mackenzie, all the guys, bro. They're just like the whole, just like recruiting side, the uh, recruiting side of it. Like all like the recruiting staff, all those guys, they're all cool. They always like hit you up, check up on you, all this stuff. It's just family vibes. And it's like, once you say you want to be a part of the family, like you're in the family. Like it's like, it's no getting out. And it's just, it's just amazing vibes. And it's just all the people love, love what they do there. And, you know, everybody just has a mutual goal. So, you know. I always say it takes a village. Like, we didn't land Juan Manaya just because of Mario or just yeah, because of sure. Pada. It was everybody. It was sure. it was the very first time you came, the, the, the receptionist knowing your name. And you're going, what? That is, sure. That's interesting. And then you walk past somebody else and was like, hey, Juan. And you're just probably like. Oh, they really want me here. Like, this isn't a joke. Sure. This isn't coach speak. Like, then I come back and they like, oh, that's the one who liked the vanilla ice cream. Make sure you get the it's those small attention to details that I love about this staff that like you hear them say, like, we don't necessarily just recruit you. We build a relationship. And at the end of the day, if you decide to become a hurricane, that relationship just grows. But he still builds that same relationship no matter who it is that walks in the building. And I respect that because. At the end of the day, he's recruiting you and your parents, right? Like he got to win for sure. The crib too. If mom walked in and was like, "Nope, I don't care what you say," it was gonna be no. So I like that he he understands that y'all are people. It's not sure. just him. You need a relationship with lunch lady. What's up, Juan? You still like X, Y, and Z? Like the last time you came, I made sure we had it for you. Like, I sure. I love that that small attention to detail, brother. Thank you so much for coming on. I cannot wait for the rest of your season. When you get the full tape, we coming back at the end of the year so we can watch you demolish more defensive linemen. And then we can preview you heading to Green Tree for your for your freshman year. Do you plan on being an early enrollee? So I go to Catholic school, so they don't allow it, sadly. They don't allow it. I'll be there early May, so. Let's go. Either way, when you get there, you know what it is. He hitting green tree and ready to move some people. I cannot wait to see this class on the offensive and defensive line. Man, y'all are just y'all are different. Y'all are monsters. But what I love about y'all, though, is like in between the ears, that high football IQ and that that competitive nature. Like I was like, hey, bro, what do you want to do at the next level? You was like block. I just want to I just want to play football. I, I like that. It's not all about you. Plaza is the same way. Like I was like. You know, do you want to move inside or move to tackle? He was like, whatever I got to do to bring, you know what I mean, the, the next ring to Mario, that's what I'm doing. He's 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 recruited championship-level players. You, Derek, Judd, Kevin Riley, JoJo, Chance. It starts with that. You got to get the right guys in the locker room. And I, I'm super proud of this class and the way you guys have come together I know things are going to change for Miami, and it does start with guys like you. For sure. So let them know where they can follow you on Instagram and Twitter so they can keep up with you the same way I'm going to. Follow him, by the way. Follow all of our damn recruits, but follow Juan. He's going to give you everything, and I'm going to link it down in the description so y'all can go follow him. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Juan Manaya underscore and on Twitter at Juan.Manaya77 on Twitter. Follow him right now. I'm linking those in the description, and I'm linking his huddle. He also will break them down game to game, too. So you, you'll you see his midseason, then you'll see him game to game. So if you're like, I just want to keep up with Juan week to week, probably about a few days after his game, you will see a new video on his huddle. And then at the end of the year, when he gets his full season, we're coming back so we can watch him maul a bunch of other defensive linemen. Thank you again, bro. I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you, man. Go Canes.
Go Canes. Like, share, subscribe. Go follow Juan now. We out.